Namaskaram everyone. In this video, I shall be talking about the latest guidelines on neonatal sepsis, which are the National Neonatal Federation guidelines given in the, the end of the year 2021. These are based primarily on the diagnosis and management of neonatal sepsis. So as per these guidelines in primary or secondary healthcare settings, one must not use cefotaxim and amikacin or any other higher broad spectrum antibiotics for probable sepsis or probable meningitis in neonates who are admitted to special newborn care units. Rather, one must treat with the WHO recommended first line antibiotics that is ampicillin or gentamicin. So if you have uh, no definite evidence about sepsis or meningitis and you want to start antibiotics empirically, you must not use broad spectrum antibiotics as per these guidelines if you are in working in a primary or secondary healthcare setting. In patients with suspected early onset sepsis, that is patients having risk factors for early onset sepsis, one must administer antibiotics if the patient is symptomatic, be he of any gestational age. In asymptomatic neonates who are less than 35 weeks of gestational age, there are two categories. If the patient is more than 32 weeks gestation, that is 32 to 35 weeks gestational age, if there is any one red flag risk factor, or more than equal to two yellow flag risk factors, then in that case, one must administer antibiotics. These red flag and yellow flag risk factors I will be discussing in the next scene. In the age group less than equal to 32 weeks, one must administer antibiotics if either one red flag or one yellow flag risk factor is positive. Also, in asymptomatic neonates more than equal to 35 weeks of gestational age, one must administer antibiotics only if along with risk factors of early onset sepsis, positive laboratory markers are also there like C-reactive protein, procalcitonin or deranged that is leukopenia or leukocytosis in TLC and neutrophilic predominance or neutropenia. So here I'll, I'll be discussing the, I'll be telling you the risk factors which we were talking about in the earlier scene. See, there are two types of risk factors. First is the red flag risk factors in which there are basically two risk factors. First is a clinical diagnosis of chorioamnionitis and second is a foul smelling like a and the various yellow flag risk factors include preterm premature rupture of membranes, rupture of membranes lasting for more than equal to 18 hours, intrapartum fever of more than equal to 38 degrees centigrade in presence of suspected or confirmed bacterial infection and handling by a dye or unclean vaginal examinations, delivery surface or cord tear. Also, empirical antibiotics if they have been started in a patient with suspected early onset sepsis, they must be stopped after 36 hours if the blood culture remains sterile at the end of 36 hours, the patient's clinical condition is stable and there are no clinical signs suggestive of sepsis in that baby. One must not preferably use early onset sepsis calculators. So this is something new. Early onset sepsis calculators have been used by various countries, especially in the developed countries. These are for example case of permanent network. So NNF recommends not to use these calculators, especially for the management of well-appearing asymptomatic neonates born at or after 35 weeks of gestational age, even if they have risk factors for early onset sepsis. In patients with late onset sepsis, one must not use serum C-reactive protein routinely for the diagnosis of sepsis. Also, it can be used, CRP can be used as a screening tool to rule out sepsis in neonates with a very low probability of late onset sepsis. For example, having non-specific signs, non-specific signs include apnea, feed intolerance or fast breathing. So in that case, you, must, you can get CRP done as a screening tool whether or not the patient is developing sepsis or the, these are due to other reasons like hypoglycemia or due to other factors. There is no advantage at all in using procalcitonin over CRP as a screening test for late onset sepsis. And if you are doing CSF for suspected meningitis, then you must rely more on CSF WBC count and protein estimation rather than on using CSF glucose for uh, 
the determination or for the diagnosis of meningitis in these babies as far as the duration of antibiotics are concerned the nnf has come up with certain important parameters in uncomplicated but definite definite means culture positive neonatal sepsis one must not use a shorter course of antibiotics of say 5 to 7 days like many other physicians do and one must preferably treat with a standard course of antibiotics so standard course means 10 to 14 days in patients with uncomplicated probable that is culture negative neonatal sepsis or pneumonia one must not use a shorter course of antibiotics of 2 to 3 days and should preferably treat with a standard course of 5 to 7 days so 10 to 14 days for a definite that is culture positive neonatal sepsis and 5 to 7 days for probable neonatal sepsis that is culture negative sepsis also one in these patients one must not stop antibiotic based on only one or serial negative biomarker report one must see the clinical condition in entirety as we had seen earlier that is baby's clinical condition blood culture and uh, the development of new clinical signs rather than relying on the report of biomarker alone in patients with uncomplicated uti one must again refrain from using a shorter course of antibiotics and should preferably treat with a longer course of antibiotics of typically 14 days in patients with meningitis if the probability if it is a definite or a probable but uncomplicated neonatal meningitis then in that case one must not use or i duration of 14 days or less and one must preferably treat with the standard course of antibiotics of 21 days so meningitis whether if it is definite or it is probable one must treat for 21 days and if it is a complicated meningitis complicated meningitis means meningitis having other complications like ventriculitis brain abscess hydro uh, development of early hydrocephalus and all in these patients also one must not use a shorter course of antibiotics of less than 4 weeks and must use a standard duration that is 4 to 6 weeks so uncomplicated meningitis 21 days and complicated meningitis 4 to 6 weeks as far as the antifungals are concerned the nnf says that one must use antifungal therapy for 14 days after the documented clearance of candida species from the blood stream and the resolution of signs symptoms attributable to candidemia and not use it uh, casually for a duration of 14 to 21 days also one can use a longer duration of antifungal therapy in case there is deep seated tissue infection or there is a metastatic complication of fungal infection elsewhere in the body this should be based on the site of infection the patient's response to treatment and the resolution of signs and symptoms in that patient so finally summarizing all these guidelines as the which the nnf have stated empiric antibiotics to be started in special newborn care units is ampicillin and gentamicin which is the first line antibiotic as recommended by the world health organization and one must stop empiric antibiotics after 36 hours if blood culture is sterile the patient's clinical condition is stable and there is no development of new signs of sepsis one must not use serum crp for diagnosis of late onset sepsis routinely and should not use csf glucose for the diagnosis of meningitis and rely more on csf wbc count and csf protein antibiotics in suspected early onset sepsis should be given to all symptomatic neonates if be they of any gestational age in asymptomatic neonates one must administer antibiotics if they are less than 35 35 weeks of gestational age depending on the risk factors they have which i have discussed in detail in the video and in asymptomatic neonates more than 35 weeks of gestational age if they along with the risk factors for early onset sepsis there are positive lab markers as far as the duration of antibiotics are concerned in uncomplicated definite sepsis the duration should be 10 to 14 days in uncomplicated probable sepsis duration should be 5 to 7 days and in uncomplicated uti the standard duration is of 14 days in meningitis whether it uh, it is probable or definite which is uncomplicated so uncomplicated probable or definite meningitis 
use it for a duration of 21 days for complicated meningitis use antibiotics for a duration of minimum 4 to 6 weeks antifungals are to be given in deep seated or metastatic fungal infection and for 14 days after documented clearance of candidemia and resolution of symptom signs attributable to the fungal infection so thank you so very much for a patient listening and watching and please do share the knowledge thank you so much thanks a lot